Hey, I'm Brunstead, and this is my channel. I've tried to make an introduction about 15 different times, and every time it's as bad as before. I'm just going to go into it and worry about the introduction later. So today, I'm, this is episode 1 of 500. There's going to be 500 more of these. Um, I'm going to be talking about Shadow of the Eternals and why I'm worried about it. Bam! So here's the main thing that worries me. The people behind Shadow of the Eternals are Precursor Studios. Precursor Studios is basically what's left of Silicon Knights, more or less. The main people behind Silicon Knights seem to have moved on to, holy shit, is there a nurse? Uh, seem to have moved on to Precursor Game uh, Studios, like Dennis Dyack. And that's what really worries me, because Dennis Dyack is basically responsible for everything that's going wrong with Silicon Knights. He's, I think, I think he was a CEO. He's basically the head creative person. He's kind of like who Ken Levine is for Rational Games. So that makes me pretty worried. So this is why I don't like Dance Dyak. When they were on Nintendo, they produced Eternal Darkness and uh, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Both pretty highly acclaimed games. After they out uh, out from under Nintendo, Dance Dyak, or Dyak, I would say his name, Dyak. Dyak, no. Dyak basically felt that they're free from Nintendo. And he kind of felt stifled by Nintendo. I think there's a direct quote. What is this? Dennis believed that SK was finally out from under the oppressive nature of Nintendo as a publisher. Once Dennis was given more freedom, things started to fall apart. The weird thing about this whole situation is all the good games that Silicon Knights ever worked on were put out under Nintendo. So it was basically Nintendo who was re responsible for all the quality control standards and everything. When Silicon Knights was left to themselves to do whatever they wanted, they made uh, Two Human and X-Men Destiny, which are two of the best games that come out in the last gaming generation, I think everyone would agree. Um, so when Silicon was free of Nintendo, it was bad. <laughs> so yeah, that's what happened when uh, Nintendo left Silicon Knights to do whatever they wanted. Dest Dyak was like, hey, we're gonna make uh, Two Human and X-Men Destiny, and they're gonna be freaking terrific, which they weren't, they were terrible. And if you read the giant Kotaku article, you see why X-Men was so freaking bad. Um, basically, the entire time they're working on X-Men, they're involved um, putting resources towards a demo for Eternal Darkness 2 that Dennis wanted to shop around to potential publishers. The problem was, this is basically what Randy Pitchford did with Gearbox when they were working on Aliens. They outsourced it to a bunch of crappy studio, uh, debatably talented studios. I don't want to outright throw them under the bus. And they barely worked on their own game themselves, from what I understand. Who knows what really happened? Um, so Aliens was a piece of crap, and Gearbox spent most of the time working on Borderlands 2, getting that to ship. So they're dumping resources in that project while another project tanked. And that's basically what happened with X-Men Destiny. Um, you can read the whole thing. There's a lot of good stuff in it. But uh, Another good quote was from a person who worked for Silicon Ice was, Tyranny breeds fear, not creativity. <laughs> basically the whole time... So, uh, they're just working on Eternal Darkness 2. And what really worries me is the second quote, or third quote, I should say now. The furthest they got with the Eternal Darkness 2 demo uh, was literally one two-level church interior, says one former employee. It was really bad, as I recall. It took the side team a long time to even get that far. Bad tech combined with a team composed of people who had not shipped a title since Metal Gear really hurt that demo. Other than that, I can't explain why things went so poorly for them, except that a lot of key people responsible for the original Turn of Darkness are long gone. Uh... <laughs> that doesn't bode well for Shadow of the Eternals, because Precursor Studios is basically Dennis Dyack and like five other people, from what I gleaned from the website. And the thing is, if you look at the Shadow of the Eternals demo video, it's actually kind of, I want, I don't want to say impressive, but it looks adequate, it looks kind of neat. But the problem with it, to me, is if you um, look at Chapter 3 of Eternal Darkness when he plays this character named Anthony, Deliver this to our Lord and Emperor, Charlemagne the Frank. No one but him must see it. They are words for his eyes only, 
at once. I have an urgent message for His Highness Charlemagne. Do you know where he is? You must be Charlemagne's courier. They like took the level from Eternal Darkness, shoved it into like uh, Shadow of Eternals, and kind of upgraded the visuals. It uses the same exact uh, audio track. There's the ch the audio loop of the monks chanting. It uses the same exact layout. The layout of the room is the exact same. It's like a two-floor building. Um, a lot of the dialogue, I think, is even the same. Uh, there's voice acting in the Shadow of the Eternals demo. Debatably good voice acting. Um, and then also with the demo, there's a young girl that shows up who had, who's uh, basically Alex Roybus from Eternal Darkness. She has blonde hair. She has like the same function. She looks at this book, and she kind of has a flashback, which is a, I'm guessing, to one of her ancestors. We don't know because it's just a short little video. From my research, it is apparent that the endeavors of mankind are mere puppetry at the hands of the ancients. A book? No one knows what it really is. Some say it contains the secrets of the universe. Perhaps even immortality. Whatever you wish, it can be yours. Touch the words, Clara. Let them speak to you. And that's basically Eternal Darkness. Like, I thought this was... I think that it was supposed to be a spiritual sequel, but this looks more like a, almost a remake than a spiritual sequel. I mean, we'll see. But the fact that they want you to fund this, you don't really know what you're funding, that's what gets me. Especially because on the website, like, I, I don't know how much more legit the Kickstarter is, but on the website they have like a little, uh, one of those asterisks, you know, where it's like, from the Q&A section, our financial goal is a flexible one. However, if it becomes apparent that we cannot raise enough to develop this project, then we'll refund all pledges. That's pretty vague. I mean, you don't know at what point they'll refund anything. So, I wouldn't really trust investing in that, especially when you have Di Dennis Dyack on board. I mean, if you just read that Kotaku article, you'll just see how much of a jerk he seems to be. This basically reminds me of Kurt Schilling. Um, I forget the studio name, but Kingdom of Amalur. Basically, when he thinks he knows all this stuff about game design, he really doesn't. I think Dennis Dyack has like some degrees in computer science crap, so he's probably more qualified. But like the fact that after Nintendo let them go to do whatever they wanted, you make two human, and then you make X Men Destiny, and two of the, those two games are arguably some of the worst made the past generation. And then they try to sue Epic uh, for like the failure of two human, saying they weren't given like the proper tools to know what they're doing or something with Unreal Engine three. The whole thing is just like a bad uh, situation. And then it's like uh, I don't I don't remember how much Shadow of the Eternals is asking for people to raise. But to just kind of like throw money on something when you have no guarantee it'll be any good, judging by their past projects. I mean, it's a different studio, Precursor Studios, but it has most of the same people responsible, especially Dennis Dyack, who's, if you read the article, you'll see how much he's basically responsible for uh, X Men being a pile of shit. Um, the other thing, too, is that Precursor bought a, like, a ton of resources from Silicon Knights related to Eternal Darkness. Uh, they can't take the name or whatever because I think Nintendo owns copyright which is why it's supposed to be a spiritual sequel but to me it looks like the exact same thing with some like different visuals and a slightly different backstory behind it all I don't know I want it to be a good game but the fact that Dennis Dyack is involved and the fact that the demo they show is basically just a level from Eternal Darkness with fancier stuff in it I don't know it's kind of hard to trust that.